The Mesoamerican Reef is a huge and stunning barrier reef that draws lots of tourists who want to go diving. The diver in today's video is a frequent visitor who just completed her 700th dive in this location. She lost contact with her diving partner, though, when they dove downward, and she was never found alive again. In Roten, Honduras, there is a resort called Anthony Key Resort that is all-inclusive. With optimum comfort and beautiful nature, it promises to be a great trip. Anthony's Key Resort, there are a variety of activities you may participate in, including diving, snorkeling, and many others. The Mesoamerican Barrier Reef System, the biggest barrier reef in the Western Hemisphere, protects it. It extends approximately 700 miles, 1,126 kilometers, from the Yucatan Peninsula's northernmost point, all the way to the Honduran Bay Islands. It touches the coastlines of Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico. Numerous species of mollusks, stony coral, and aquatic creatures including dolphins, turtles, and stingrays will also be seen. You will experience the natural beauty, cultural beauty, and island beauty when you visit Anthony's Key Resort. The discovery of new things and further exploration are opportunities that present themselves every day. In order to enjoy their vacation in both comfort and comfort on dry land, many outstanding divers have selected this resort. Anthony Key Resort Maureen Patricia Lalonde and her husband Pierre took a five-week vacation. Although this was not Maureen's first visit to the resort, the Canadian National was awaiting her 700th dive. She comes here numerous times a year to go diving. Unlike his wife Maureen, Pierre wasn't a diver, yet they frequently visited Anthony Key Resort together. Both Maureen and Pierre are charming folks who genuinely enjoy socializing. The pair just met Terry and his wife, another couple who were divers. The night before the accident, Maureen and Pierre invited Terry and his wife to supper. All the boats in the water had to be moved to the opposite side of the island by the airport because that side of the sea was calmer than where they initially were on January 8, 2017, the day of their dive. On the same boat as the dive master assigned to them were Terry, Maureen, Clay, and a few other divers. Except for her weights, which were under the dive master's care, Maureen had all of her diving gear with her. Their diving master briefed them about the dive they were about to begin while they were still inside the boat. They were assisting one of the divers adjust at approximately 20 feet when they heard the dive master banging on his tank, 6 meters. The four divers who were already in the water continued to plunge deeper despite the dive master's constant banging on his tank. The diving master could be seen doing a nose dive while simultaneously slamming his tank and waving. Terry was unable to see the dive master, who had been observed previously on a downward dive. By the time the other four divers had reached a depth of roughly 80 feet, 24 meters. Before Terry could realize what was occurring, his dive partner vanished as well. Before leveling up, Terry resumed his plunge down to roughly 100 feet, 30 meters. The three bubble trails he had earlier noticed were followed after he turned on his headlamp. The young youngster who was partnered with his father had been split apart from him when Terry began his ascent up to 80 feet, 24 meters. So he had him stay there with him. And three minutes later, their father arrived. The three of them kept diving for another five minutes using their flashlights. Terry then informed them that they needed to head back to the boat. Thinking about their dive master's constant pounding and the fact that he was spotted in a downward dive and Maureen wasn't with him, they sensed something had gone wrong with their dive. The diving master had already dived past them by the time they reached their safety stop at 15 feet, 5 meters, and he had also taken off his mask when he reached the surface. They turned back to the ocean after seeing him conversing with the boat's skipper. Before Clay, who they had lost contact with in the water, Terry, the father, and the boy arrived at the boat. The diving master reported seeing Maureen coming down with her feet first, her arms folded, and her head cocked to one side. Maureen made no response to any of his hammering or gesturing, he lamented. The dive master lost sight of Maureen at around 200 feet, 61 meters, although the depth she was descended to was closer to 400 to 500 feet, 122 to 152 meters. Maureen was simply drifting downward, with no response or control, so to speak. Clay and the diving master had to go back to the water to look for Maureen. Two dive masters from a different boat also participated in the search, but none of them found anything. Their diving master complained of pain in his right shoulder joint as the search group made their way back to the boat, and Clay complained of a headache. 
As they left the dive site, they were still unsure of what had happened to Maureen. What could possibly have happened to Maureen, a seasoned diver who was making her 700th dive that day? How could she be doing a downward fall when she was aware of the risk involved? There are numerous factors that could have caused that decreasing trend. She might have experienced vertigo, a stroke, a flooded regulator, water inhalation, or another condition while on her excursions. All overweight may have contributed to the decreasing trend, it wasn't considered to be the main cause. Relief personnel and a few other individuals joined the search on land and in the water after divers made multiple unsuccessful attempts to reach the accident location in search of Maureen. Her husband was forced to join the search squad as well. For a full week, they all searched non-stop in vain. They also searched the Honduran islands of Utila after moving on to the Omo sector, which is close to Guatemala. Nothing was discovered in any of these locations up until they arrived at a road leading to French Harbor on the idyllic island of Roten. When they discovered Maureen's body on the side of the road, her body was no longer compressed. Instead, it had been found in two pieces, with one of her legs missing. How did the diver's body, which was last seen in the resort's waters, end up on the idyllic island of Roten? What may have dismembered her body? Could the adjacent shark dive in the area south have been the source of the attack by a shark? Nobody is entirely sure what happened to her in the icy, deep water of Roten Resorts, and there are still a lot of unanswered concerns regarding the reason of her accident. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you liked what you saw, click the bell icon, like, and subscribe buttons to be notified when we post another thrilling diving story.